a plastic woman in this establishment, I don't think. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. And you may notice something a bit different about me. So I have had more of my tattoo completed. So I am sorry if it does look a little bit uh, gross and shiny, shall we say. I am having to cream it every three hours on the hour, girl. But I'm so happy with how it's... Hang on. There we go. <laughs> I'm so happy with how it's, like, turning out. Now that tattoo talk is out of the way, today we're going to be watching another episode of Doc. To 90210, girls. So apparently there's a few things in the last episode that we saw that has got you guys like talking in the comments. Number one being that some of you guys have thought that the doctor, Dr. Ray, is a little bit selfish for having such a like high powered intense career and also trying to raise a family at the same time. There's two arguments to this, isn't there? There is like, it is better to be present in your child's life as a parent. And there is also like your ability as a parent to earn a good wage and be well connected to ensure that your child thrives. I don't have children, so I can't really comment on it, but I'd like to think that if I did have children or a dependent, I would, like my little dog Biscuit, for example, I need to work so hard so that Biscuit can get all the delicious things. I need to work super hard for my future dash hound. Again, I feel actually quite connected to a lot of you guys because you were talking in the comments about how a lot of you are child free. And I was like, fantastic, join the club, sis, spend all your money on us. <laughs> all right, my lovely. So the last kind of couple of episodes of this show that we saw, they were like a two-parter, like season beginning to climb the top of the mountain drama girls. So we saw a patient who had a botched breast augmentation by a cosmetic surgeon four times, which is really, really shocking. And we also saw a patient who wanted under eye bags removed. And I think that's kind of all we've seen so far. The title of this episode is called The Fountain of Youth. Uh... Which kind of leads me to think there might be some problematic language and a little bit of like difficulty in watching this episode because realistically, I am definitely in the group of people that wants to remain as young as possible forever, both in heart, in mind, in skin, in aesthetics, like that's everything about my life. I would like to remain young, happy, go lucky, fervent and I was gonna say futile. <laughs> Not futile, my loves. I'm gonna level with you guys. I've had a bit of Botox. I've had a bit of filler. I've had cosmetic surgery done. I have yet to have anything that's reconstructive, which is my FFS that I'll be having in May. But I do have a few friends who've been through specific anti-aging surgery, such as facelifts and things like that. So I am excited to see kind of like a little bit of like the behind the scenes and like what happens to someone when they want to go for anti-aging surgeries because I think eventually I'll definitely be in that list of people that wants to maybe get a little bit of a nip and a tuck and a snatural facelift. Oh God, exposing myself on the internet. Ooh. Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> all right, my lovelies. So apparently all of the doctors throughout this entire season change. So in certain episodes, we see different doctors speaking to us than we did in the episode before. So I have no idea who we're going to meet this time. But without further ado, my loves, it's time for Dr. 90210. Pop your ohanger in. Get your beverage at the ready. Today, I am on the white monster, which is actually a nice refreshing change from my ultra fiesta that I often have. And with that, my loves, should we watch some plastic surgery? Oh, I love a bit of surgery, girls. I've got no black nails today, so I feel all like my fingers are just really long. <laughs> Such a weird feeling. Oh. I'm Dr. Robert Kotler, Be a Beverly uh, Hills cosmetic surgeon. Beverly Hills. Either you are, no, I don't think. Do you know, I keep forgetting exactly what volume I can play all these shows at because they all have different volumes. I, it's like a surprise. Am I going to instantly get tinnitus? I just don't know. I'm at the peak of my game um, and I think I've seen it all. I don't think. Oh, here we go. Uh, girls, such a somber song. Lips, a woman's curves, a hand. Oh, the trees. Oh, unhinged. Oh, 5.45 a.m. Oh, here we are, Dr. Ray again. Good morning. Time to well, do the samba? Uh, I get up about 5.45. Ooh, I awesome. hit the gym. Staying young is hard work. You! It, or, or it, Staying Adam. young is hard he looks different in every single shot we see. When he was giving that interview in the last couple of episodes where he's facing the other sort of like side of the room and he's sort of facing over that way, these vague descriptions are not really helping, are they? He looked different there than when he did when he was in that black suit talking to the patient and now he looks different again in this pinstripe suit. 
This man is a mysterious man and apparently has a YouTube channel as well. So we will be diving into that in the where are they now at the end of this season, my loves. You should get eggs. Well, I'm in the business of youth, so I teach by example too. That is true. That is true. I've said this before in a couple of um, videos. Men in the makeup world, I'm like, if you aren't wearing makeup, how will I know you know what the product is doing? I don't know. I would feel really weird if I came across a cosmetic or plastic surgeon that had no interest in getting plastic surgery themselves. Do you know what I mean? Because how can you really fully understand the mental capacity that you have to go through if you haven't been through something like that? Is it uh, maybe it's one of those cases of like, don't knock it till you try it, girl. Lovely pussy. Oh, pussy, my love. What a beautiful pussy you are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. This is the infamous 12 egg morning routine. This stuff stinks. I had to eat outside because Haley will kick me out of the house. Eggs in a bag. Eggs, 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 all I want is eggs. Very painful. If it wasn't for my 12 eggs, I'd be 145 pounds. I like to be 185, but here you go. It's brutal, but it's a pretty disciplined diet. I'm late. You see that? Go and eat your eggs in the garden, doctor! I'm going to cream. Like, wh 12 boiled eggs for breakfast? Your digestive system must be a state, Dr. Ray. How can you? No, you shouldn't shave whilst driving. So we're in the That's a Hills triangle. This is the epicenter of plastic surgery the in the Bermuda world. Bermuda Triangle? One in 12 of the world's plastic surgeons are within two miles of us. Ooh. Most of these offices are all medical offices. So this is the best building. This is the crown jewel. What an ugly I'm building. Right, here right now, which is okay. <laughs> but we want to be, Ooh, it's more Venom. Hollywoody in there. Newer. Hollywood. -y. It's a five year wait to get in there. I've waited four and a half years. And you see that second floor? The uh, window right next to the arch behind the palm tree. So that's where I want to be. Oh, so that's going to be his office. Oh, but this is his office. Dr. Cotter? Yes, I'm Robert. Are we going to see some plastic surgeon rivalry drama? Is that what we're going to see? The Real Housewives of Plastic Girls! She pieces when she boards. Sometimes she shorts. I'm Robert Cotler, MD. I'm a cosmetic surgeon. Practice here Mr. in Beverly Dick. Hills. I've been practicing in this area for 27 years. I will oh. call the racetrack, see what time the horses are running today. My area specialty is cosmetic surgery of the face and neck only. Okay. Because excellence comes from repetition of a limited number of procedures. That's a very good this point. This building, 436 North Bedford Drive, is in the heart. It's the same thing in makeup. You wouldn't go to a bridal artist and be like, oh, put me in drag makeup, girls. No, go to people who know what they're doing. 436 North Bedford Drive is in the heart of Beverly Hills. I would also tell you there's rarely a vacancy here. I've been in a this office woman, 13 statue. years. It's very well located. People expect to achieve good service Look at here, and they do. This is where we meet our patients and since we just met, the wall gives a little flavor of my life. The furnishings, the artwork are designed to make people feel comfortable and not intimidated. Why? Because we know that they need some. What was that like Annabelle comes to life thing there? I don't like any of that. No, Chucky's gone wild, girls. Disgusting. First of all, let's talk about this room, shall we? So this is a consultation room. I don't know how I would feel stepping into a consultation room that looks like this. I just feel like nowadays things are a lot more streamlined to make you feel comfortable and also in an elegant setting for surgery. This feels a bit haphazard children's library. Maybe that was the vibe he was going for. I mean, if this is what, like... No, this is 2004, so it's not even hugely long ago. Oh, I suppose it is kind of thing, though. I'm getting very Queer Eye for the Straight Guy vibes from this, like, room. I can't tell you why, but maybe it's, like, the ochre furniture or the ochre floor. I'm never going to escape ochre, am I? Why? Because we know that they need some comfort. This is a major step people are making, and often they're anxious. I'm That's from true. Chicago, born and raised. I am a product Chicago of the Midwest. Chicago, I like think that some of the qualities, the good qualities of the heartland have stayed with me. It's kind of a total experience. It's a little bit of Bob Kotler. How are we doing? Okay? Good. Uh, okay. Is Arlene here yet? She's coming in this morning. Oh, good. CRT flashing. Oh, here we go. My name is Wait. Arlene. I'm going to Dr. Kotler to have a high intense chemical peel. Good morning. Oh, how are you? See how we doing? I've had one of them. All right. Arlene, she's going to have a chemical skin peel. 
So chemical peels now are much more widely available. In this day and age, you can get things like uh, a salicylic acid peel. You can even get glycolic acid peels. You can even get lactic acid peels, just like in your local drugstore, really, by the Inky List, uh, the Ordinary, and the such like other brands. So nowadays, you can do like a lighter peel at home yourself, like on the daily or every other day with literally stuff available over the counter. Back in the day, it was a lot harder to do that. And you had to be really like clued up in skincare. That I must say is one of the big things that came out of like the 2010s, I think. From about 2013 onwards, there was a big jump in both makeup and skincare. With the advent of YouTube, it's really easy now to find out how to fix the problems on your skin if you don't necessarily want to take it all the way to a plastic surgeon. But the strongest chemical peel that I have been under is a TCA acid peel at 30%. And it had about 12 days of downtime and I did it at 17 years old. I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself, my loves. It is too much. Always go to a professional. But I do think that getting into skin peels at such a young age has protected my skin from aging too much, I think. I am starting to show my age now, but like, it's fine. We're all going to eventually. I just want to like slow that down as much as possible. So what type of skin peel is she going to get? I don't know if Abaji blue peels were a thing in this day and age, but we'll see. The chemical removal of wrinkles on the face. So when you look into the mirror, mm. what don't you like? She's got like smooth well, skin. You know, I used to be well. a smoker. So these um. lines here, all of these lines here, I'm telling you to do this. She's 64. I want to look wonderful for my wedding. Well, this is an exciting time for you. The process wow. is the entire face is coated with a chemical prescription. Yes. Penetrates into the skin and erases the outer layer. It takes a week. And the old oh. skin kind of washes off with soap and water, yeah. beginning on the third day and ending on the seventh day. Will it look horrible? It'll look red. It looks like a It does. You do look a bit like a fried steak. That is disgusting. Normal. Usually at about three months just in time for your wedding. I'm looking forward to it. I feel very, very youthful, and I want to look as young as I feel. I mean, for 64, oh, she looks I, great. She looks... I oh. want to look... There, if we put it here, she looks... I mean, this is filtered as well, but she looks really great. Maybe slightly different makeup techniques, but I feel like some of these, like, more mature ladies are very much into a specific style of makeup. Gosh, she'd be, like, 80 to 82 now, wouldn't she? 82, 80, something like that. See, when it comes to removing deep wrinkles, I didn't think that skin peels were the best option for that because it's almost like wrinkles in your own collagen slash, like, tissue fibres. So you need to, like, plump them out as well as reducing them from the outside, you need to plump them back out, like to just make everything smooth, which is the reason why you can't like peel away these contours, because this is a contour of my face. So when I don't want smile lines like here, I have to get them filled. Chemical peels are only really for like superficial wrinkles. I think I would rather get filler over a deeper peel if I was really trying to change such a drastic thing on my face. And I want to look as young as I feel. Oh, very reasonable. I live in West Hollywood wow. in a magnificent uh, penthouse with a commanding view of Los Angeles. She's a wealthy woman. I have woman. the honor of being public relations uh, director for Embassy Pictures, Josephine Levine, in Europe when he was making pictures with Sophia Loren and Fellini. And these people became my friends when I was Oh, very, my very goodness. Young. That's Marcello Maschietti and Sophia Loren at the Rome Opera House. Wow. And here I am sitting in the oh, next room. look! Uh, Mastriani was considered the biggest star in the world. We stopped off at Positano, lots of paparazzi, and Marcello went in. I wanted to get bathing suits, and he bought me five bikinis. Never had an affair with Marcello Mastriani. But I think back and I say, my God, should have, could have, would have. This picture is Sandy Howard, my last husband, husband Aww. number three. Sandy has done 72 movies. Sandy has Alzheimer's. He is in the motion picture home. He really doesn't know who I am, although I visit. At the motion picture home? My goodness, this industry really did look after its people working for it, didn't it? Is there even such thing as a motion picture home anymore? I am learning so much here, just from this short little bit here. Should I, I could have had an affair with that really famous man. He really doesn't know who I am, although I visit him. That and is so Jeffrey sad. Katzenberg. Alzheimer's is a Jeffrey real... Jeffrey Katzenberg and my former husband worked together years ago. Jeffrey Katzenberg has raised millions of dollars for the motion picture television 
fund retirement home. Oh. This is my new life. This is my fiance, Bryce. Oh, my goodness. I've met uh, the love of my life. I'm getting married in October at the Bel Air Hotel. Four times married. Oh, okay. I don't plan to even get one. Are you excited? Eh? Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> I met my fiance 11 months ago. He swept me off my feet. We'll do your ceremony on Swan Lake, and then we'll escort all your Swan girls. The Swan well, Lake. The Swan girls. It makes you feel young. Nelly Galan's going to officiate. She's going to be like, Why aren't you making it to the pageant? It makes you feel young. It makes you feel wonderful. And it's not limited to the young, but only to the young at heart. Have you decided what you're going to wear, Arlene? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. I, as, as I tell people, think uh, The Great Gatsby, Mia Farrow and The Great Gatsby. But can I wear Ooh. cowboy boots? Yes. OK. You can wear anything you want as long as you show up. Oh, that's quite sweet. Mercedes, Tiffany, Arlene, Wendy, woman. How are you? Oh, Good. doggy. Mm -hmm. Is, are we getting yeah, a fitting for I her told outfit? my fiance I want to be uh, a trophy wife. I want to look like a babe. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Look at this. I want to be a trophy wife? This is this show has taken a turn. We've gone from plastic surgery to bridal plastic. Ooh, flashbacks. Janessa's a wasp! A uh, dress like this is $3,295. Mm -hmm. When Dr. Kotler is finished with me, remember the picture I showed you this morning? 1960-something? That's what he's going to roll the years back to. I mean, you might need to be a bit more realistic than that. The 19th, you're not going to roll 60 years of your life back. Did this lady lie about her age? Turning back the clock to the 1960s would make her four years old, according to the age she said. With one chemical peel treatment. I don't think. Maybe she's getting more than one. <laughs> Palm trees on the game, a house, mansion, just Hello. random mansion oh, in Bel Air. Welcome. Arlene, Arlene. Howard. Nice to meet you. Bryce. Hi, Bryce. This is the formal sitting room. I've got my collection of furniture. My house is fully furnished. Her penthouse is fully furnished. So I'm shopping for a new house for both of us. This is exactly how the my rich live. Room the house. How or they my live. My second favorite room in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Viagra. <laughs> The nice thing about working with Look, he looks different. is they're a little more cheerful and they have a lot more Breast. hope. Some of our older patients have been through a divorce or two, perhaps a little more bitter about life, and um, they're not going to be the happiest of patients afterwards. I make a conscious decision in my life that I'm going to be happy. And you know what? I'm happy. How are you doing? Honey? I'm doing fine. I mean, that's great. If it works, it works. What an interesting little segment we had there. So Dr. Ray made the observation that young people are usually more hopeful and excited with their results than um, older patients can be. Is that true? I would say, actually, from my experience in the beauty industry, I'm going to pull it back to cosmetics because that's where I can draw my parallels of information from. When I was uh, working on the beauty counter and there were people who had large pores, for example, women of a certain age who wanted to fill in the pores and make their skin look smooth and youthful, there's only so much that makeup can do. Do you know what I mean? You need a good skincare routine, otherwise makeup will not look nice on top. And people that are like, no, I don't moisturise, but I want a facelift. It's like, mm, but... You need to have the complete package of looking after yourself. You can't just spot cleanse. That's not how it works. Let me know what you guys think about that statement there about like young people being more hopeful about results rather than older patients. Because I think that, I don't know if it's true as such, but it definitely seems to be something maybe we're just paying more attention to people who complain rather than people who don't. Do you know what I mean? Negative reinforcement, girls. You horrible, horrible girl. Hi. Hi. Okay, what we're going to do is Annette. I'm going to take a few pictures of you, okay? Uh -huh. And this is for the computer imaging. Sounds like she's I take screaming. a picture of the patient. I modify it in the computer. Oh, it's going to be Photoshop. of what to expect after surgery. Are you just going to smooth her skin? The first thing I'm going skin? to do is... Ooh. I'm going to start the peel. So this is my first step, so <gasps> don't judge it. A graphics tablet. Wow. I, oh, God. Oh, no. Magic. Lies. True, 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 why? Absolutely. Why. It erases I'm... years. Women, they want to look young. They don't want to age because they have, their, their souls are still young. That's why I will always understand and try to make somebody look younger and fresher and better. They don't have to tell me their reasons why they want to do it. Just being a woman is the reason alone. Now, here we have... I don't know quite how 
to feel about that because the assumption there is that like men are just allowed to rot but women have to keep up looking young otherwise their value in this world diminishes hmm maybe i've got some things i need to address in my own mental health bitch me too the fuck now here we have the before and after photo. No, it's fa that's face wow. tune. Photoshop. Yeah. No, You're not going to look I like that, am sis. So impressed. This is a great display so that you understand what's possible. We understand what you like. I'll print out a picture for you. So the computer imaging, in my opinion, was giving people, despite the fact that you tell them that, you know, it's not realistic, but it was giving them false hopes and expectations. Yes, Pictures exactly. Can be, you know, digitally manipulated, whereas live is live. I think some doctors are uncomfortable with going on the line and saying, okay, even though this isn't a, uh, a guarantee, um, I'm going out you pretty much have to be able to meet the expectation. Young lady, yeah, right. here's mm -hmm. your future. Thank you, I'm so excited. Good to see you, okay? So I'm not sure how I feel about those um, photos there. I love a filter. I think everyone loves a little bit of a filter, especially when you spend, when, what's, the, what's the phrase? Chronically online? Is that what it's called now? I do a lot of Instagram. I do a lot of YouTube. I do not filter my YouTube videos, but I will filter my photos and my stories for Instagram just because there's something about iPhone front-facing camera that will just read you for filth. Like, I don't, nobody needs to see the inside of my pores. That's unnecessary. But that there, I felt, was a little bit disingenuous because all that woman did, really, Annette, the digital imaging specialist, all she did was apply a blurring filter to the skin. Now, skin isn't just wrinkles. There's texture, there's vellus hairs, there's pores, there's, like, pigmentation. There's all sorts of different things that happen on your skin that isn't just wrinkles. So I don't think that that is a realistic result to just put a blurring filter over and go, this is what a skin peel is going to make you look like. I don't think that's realistic. At least Arlene has, like, a good canvas to work with. I think she will see some really good results. Beverly Hills, women on the game. Dr. Ray's house. Oh, yes. Oh. Fuck the Pastors planet. That's what you expect to look a certain way. When they come to see me, they expect a look. Check this out. A look? Do, are you turning tricks? Can... Daytime tweed with an evening chiffon. They're all tailored. Tailored scrubs. OK. I actually take them to a tailor and have them tailored, put my name on it. If you saw your banker driving in beach shorts and a VW, would you be a little scared? Is this too Latin-y? You know, if you don't take care of yourself, you're not gonna make it in Beverly Hills. What did you say? Is this too Latin-y? You know, if you don't take Latin care of yourself, Latin you're not gonna make it in Beverly Hills. Television was different, Say goodbye, wasn't it? Miss Old Face. Goodbye, Old Face. <laughs> Today is the Aww. day that begins my new life as a younger person. Arlene, she's gonna have a chemical skin peel. The chemical removal of wrinkles on the face. This is I a have lot for a one transparency episode. Of a photograph that was on the cover of Marie Claire magazine. Ooh. That's the way she's I a look model. afterwards. Oh. And I'm gonna have you just hold your jaw. Nice she's, I mean, and... look. I know this is like pixelated AF and it's kind of old footage, but her skin is not really that bad, is it? She's 60. We have to remember that she's 64 years old. This is quite acceptable skin, I think. Still, because right. we're marking the jawline. You know that I was... Hold that. Oh, oh. The dots are to demarcate the end point of the procedure. In other words, we're only going to be treating the face. We're going to treat from the hairline to the jawline and not onto the neck. Okay. The non-surgical wrinkle removal process. It is a non-surgical procedure in that there's no yes. cutting and sewing. However, yes. because it involves the application of a prescription, the main ingredient of which is an acid, which onto one? the skin. Which acid? It is painful without anesthesia and therefore is done under an anesthetic. Oh, okay. So this is a serious peel. A little bit peel. of medicine is going to make you real, real sleepy, hon. This, I this don't think this is an Abaji peel. Cayenne pepper in it. You might feel a little sting right as it goes in. Cayenne pepper yeah. injection. That's going to sting just for a second. To be quite honest with you, I prefer to do the younger patients, slightly older patients. Sometimes their health is a little bit compromised. Their heart's not that good, a little bit older. Of course, going under. A little under. closer to death. It's not the chronologic age that the, determines the safety. It's the health of the patient. This is the prescription that I mixed. It's custom mixed for each patient oh. of the phenol chemical, which is the prime uh, medicine within the prescription. And Let's have a little look at that bottle. Can we get a close-up on that bottle? This is think? the prescription that I mixed. It's custom. Oh, it's eye wash. Oh, I wanted to see what they actually... I bet it's that blue bottle at the back. So phenol. We know it's phenol, but we don't know, like, what. Let me have a little look. I'm going to Google this quickly. What is a phenol acid peel? 
A phenol peel is the most powerful chemical peel available and is great for treating multiple fine wrinkles and sunspots. Okay, all right. It's gonna be very graphic, I think. Custom mixed for each patient of the phenol chemical, which is the prime uh, medicine within the Sliced prescription. Sliced up sentence. And is applied with a Q-tip, the lowest tech procedure in cosmetic surgery. So it's 8.35 and uh, we're gonna begin. We apply the chemical solution He's got no to gloves on. regions of the face. And we He's blend got no gloves it in, on. applying it evenly across the entire area. No one's got any the gloves medicine on. medicine does no damage to the hair. And you see there's a frost that develops on the skin. The frost tells us that the medication has absorbed into the skin. How can you just touch the hair? But wouldn't those... Wouldn't it damage the nurses? The licenses. As you notice, the face has uh, begun to uh, has begun to swell. All medications placed on the skin have a greater effect when the skin is covered with the dressing. The tapes are placed so that the Ooh. chemicals will uh, not evaporate as quickly yes, from the skin and absolutely. will li literally dive deeper into the skin. Good. Everything looks the way it should. Wake Carlene up and see her in the recovery room shortly. Arlene, I thought he said the full face. Yeah, yeah, she's waking up. Yep. The first day, Arlene is going to be very sedated because there's a burning sensation for the 8 to 12 hours immediately following the procedure. Arlene, you're doing great. It burns. Yeah, well, that's, do that's burn right. Trauma. That's okay. Here you go. She's kind of settling into having the feeling of the mask on her face. And, um, we've given her quite a bit of fentanyl, which is a narcotic, so we're trying to keep her in a, a state of comfort. Everything is fine. And I'll let Bryce know everything is oh. cool. Okay. Fentanyl? <clears throat> it's the first time I've seen Arlene this quiet. <laughs> and then Arlene will go to a recovery hideaway. The facility is called Chantique, which is a specialized wing of the Meridian Hotel here in the Beverly Hills area. This private wing caters only to patients following cosmetic surgery, and they provide full meal service and even provides transportation oh. uh, using a, a limousine uh, back to the office each day. A limousine. The, uh, routine post-operative checkups. Wow, okay, that's kind of fancy. So I have a little bit of an experience with this. So when you book any sort of FFS procedure, you do generally like stay with them in their like facility for at least, for at least a week, I think it is. It might be a bit different depending on where you go and how close you live to, you know the surgical center. So it, it, I guess it is kind of a little bit like luxury holiday, but you're having some work done now. But it's interesting to see it because we haven't seen it so far in any of these plastic surgery shows, maybe except for the swan. But the swan is like a different genre in itself because everyone's like locked away for like three or four months. So it's a bit different. But this is very much like behind the scenes of like the recovery and everything. This whole episode seems to be about Arlene, which is kind of interesting, but all right. Welcome to Shanti. Arlene came to us for two days, which is the approximate amount of time for the two days. procedure that she had done. And what we're going to do is keep her as comfortable as we possibly can. You're going to be a very happy lady. Gorgeous bride. Okay, sweetie. Recovery is not fun, is it? The music. a dead body. Well, last night I was in a lot of uh, discomfort because it feels like somebody put lots of cigarettes out on your face. Oh, no. But uh, the secret or the acid test was keeping that photograph of me. I'm going to look like that again. Oh. Vanity, thy name is woman. Oh, ecstasy like tablets. Oh, my God. <laughs> How about I walk around like this? Now, that would be a great idea. Oh, beautiful. Huh? Very snap aren't I? The doctor Oozing. said I would be. You still want to go through this thing with me, huh? Now that you know... That why didn't he, why didn't you, why didn't you both get chemical peels? That would have been nice, wouldn't it? Instead of just like, the lady needs to be smooth. Rusty spoons. Why didn't you both get chemical peels? And then you can both be like, look how young we are on our wedding day. Couples that plastic surgery together, stay together. Now that you know what I could look it's like in my worst days. It's too late, you've made your commitment. Yeah, I did, now I know. Yeah, I did. Right, I feel two. scaly, oh. I'm itchy, I feel like um, a fish. It's just all this ooze is coming out. I yeah. do feel that the skin is shriveling up and, in fact, falling off. Yes, Near that is exactly what happens. Don't photograph me from that side. Use my good side. 
I don't have a good side this morning. No, of course. What we're going to do is remove the remaining dressing uh, that was applied for the deep uh, frown lines and then uh, wash and freshen the face and put on a new layer of antibiotic ointment. And that'll be it. When I feel any of this? No, you'll not feel any of it because you're going to be out. Oh, my God. Okay. More anesthetic. Now we're just freshening up the skin by removing some of the, the old skin. <gasps> now we're going to start wow. to put on another layer of an antibiotic ointment. I've been doing this for, uh, well, the first one I did, frankly, was in 1971 and continue be, to be amazed by the process. <laughs> That's it. Procedure is over. Wow. And she won't remember any of this. Arlene? Arlene? Ah. Rodeo girls, old pussy hole. It has been two weeks since oh. my procedure. Stylish woman on the game. Dressed in ochre. Terracotta. There was and is pain after the procedure. It's not I horrific, close but it ain't great. The issue of post-operative pain, one of the great subjective themes of cosmetic surgery. Every patient has a different threshold. Yes. I go in, I tell them, your pain is going to go away in a week. It makes them feel better, and lo and behold, it goes away. I, I hate to be trite and say no pain, no gain, but oh. people know that if they're going to go through the surgery, there are certain uh, things, unpleasant certain things that they have to go through. Yes, that is exactly it. The hardest part about surgery, really, isn't actually going under and getting the surgery done. It's the recovery process and making sure that you have the willpower and the inner strength to stay on your healing course. Because every cell in your body is going to be like, No, I just want to rot. I'm very sad. because post-surgery blues is absolutely a thing. So you have to make sure that you are surrounded by people who love you. You have a really good, strong, caring network in the wider circles. And also you have a lot to entertain you and distract you from the discomfort that you're going to feel. Oh, plastic surgery. Although this isn't, is this plastic surgery? This is more like cosmetic procedure, isn't it? What's the, uh, buying a vehicle? Four weeks on, later. Let's, let's, let's oh. look at the, uh... Let's look at the roadster. It's been one month since my surgery, oh. and I'm really pleased with the results. In two months, I expect to look much more improved than today and ready for my wedding. Bryce was a little taken aback. Like, I know her, but what happened? Um, I mean, the problem is, of course, is in the left-hand photo, she's not wearing makeup, and she's in hotel well no it wasn't a hotel lighting was it it was that consultation room lighting and in the after she's in like a well-lit showroom everything looks better in a showroom she's got makeup on she's dressed nicely she's slightly smiling so it's gonna look a bit different i'm really trying to like look at the skin and i guess there's an improvement but if she's got foundation on it's going to be impossible to tell it was like all these years were erased all right all look at years, this whatever okay james oh. bond here we come oh wow then aston martin is that what that is Yes. <laughs> That's a gorgeous automobile. We're at the Galpin Premier Collection, and, you know, I got a trophy wife, and I want a trophy car. What do you think? Boat. Can I drive one? Of course. Oh, we're going for a joy ride. I've got my face peel on, and we're going for a joy I ride. My exterior matches my spirit. I always felt 20 years younger, and now I think I look 20 years younger. And I am a trophy wife now. I will get all the presents and great sex. Good heavens. What an interesting end and close that was to that little storyline there. So, I mean, follow your dreams, my lovelies. Follow your dreams. But of course, being a trophy... <laughs> Did she just wake up one day and was like, do you know what? In my 60s, I'd like to be a trophy wife and enjoy great sex. I mean... You do use this, it seems to have worked quite well, and your husband seems to really enjoy you. So, best of luck. <laughs> Dr. Ray's house. Oh, here he is. Oh, oh dear. This is the only time I have to work out. If I don't work out a little bit here, I just won't get it done. Maybe two hours. That's probably going to be the next two hours. This is normal for him, and he knows I'm irritated by it. That workout program you gave me from the magazine is wonderful. And boy, am I regretting hurting. it. Why? Look, it's right up there. I know, I but this, you're just spending it was very, way very too helpful. much time in here. You're if I don't do this, <gasps> careful, sir. I'm gonna look like all the rest of the plastic surgeons: big belly, bald, fat. You know, I'm old. If I don't do this, you're uh... not old. 
So there is absolutely something to be said about like devoting time to your family. You have chosen to get married and you have chosen to have a child. So you should at the same time choose to devote an amount of your time to your wife and your child and a second child on the way. So I can sort of understand her frustrations, but it does also kind of make me feel like people should be allowed to like spend their time how they want as long as they have free time. But when you decide to have a family, your free time is ebbed away because you now have important responsibilities. So once again, I feel like this is a very nuanced situation in which I can see problems from both sides, but I am on the wife's side at the moment because I do kind of feel like just spend some time with your wife. But at the same time, she might need to understand that in order for him to stay uh, in his aesthetic preference, shall we say, he needs to spend time in the gym. And I remember in the last episode, she said that he only needs to do it three nights a week. It's like, mm, but if you want a really juicy physique, you need to spend a little bit more than three times per week, my love. So mm, it's really difficult, isn't it? It's really difficult. I'm so interested to see what happened to this couple after the show. But I also get a weird vibe from Dr. Ray that he's like, I don't want to do any defamation, but I feel like he's like, might be playing away from home. Do you know what I mean? I'm just getting a slight vibe, slight vibe, because there's this definite disconnect between them. And I don't know if that's just like television or if that's the stress of the situation, but I get this vibe. Don't know what the vibe is. Let me know what you think. Do you get the vibe? Like, Saria, stop saying vibe. He thinks that if he lets one day go by, he's going to balloon out and become fat and bald and this and that. And I don't know. He's just, he's like that with every aspect of his life. He's just very, he's a perfectionist with everything. Punched. Oh, the next Sweet. episode. No, 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 no. Stop. Shush. So well, he just did that. Do you remember when I said this a little while ago? I think it was in there something about Miriam. When someone does this like punching and kicking. Actually, maybe it was in the last Dr. 90210 episode. Martial artists, people who always like kick and punch just at you as you're like having a conversation with them. Don't do that. It is so disrespectful. Don't do that. So disrespectful. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but ridiculous. Well, my lovelies, that was actually quite a sort of like nice episode, dare I say. We got a little bit of like a tour throughout like the golden era of Hollywood. Actually, is it the golden era of Hollywood? Because that might be like the 1920s. <laughs> I actually quite liked how calm this episode felt, actually, in comparison to previous ones we've seen. There wasn't a lot of drama. It was just genuinely trying to understand the anti-aging process from someone who is undergoing an anti-aging acid peel. Now, I didn't realize that they actually put you under anesthetic for a phenol peel. I've never really looked into phenol peels because I've always been happy with like the little superficial peels that I can do at home. And I don't think I'm there in my life yet where I need to have a really deep acid peel. Apart from that one I did at 17, shall we say. But it was nowhere near as deep as that. So, you know. But what a great show this is to give you a good, well-rounded idea of the results and the actual treatment that you're going to be under if you have something done. So the phenol acid peel, we saw she was oozing. She was very crispy and tight, which is exactly what it is. You have technically, like, chemically burnt the layers of the skin in a very measured and controlled way in order to provide a brighter, softer, more youthful appearance. And although I must say I didn't like the before and after photos because I didn't, once again, I didn't feel like this show gave a good representation of what before and after looked like. The same happened with the breast reconstruction of, uh, was it Cara, Carrie? On the last episode because they just did a, like a fully clothed after with like a push-up bra. So it's kind of like a little bit disingenuous because it kind of makes you feel like, oh, if she hasn't got foundation on and she hasn't got makeup on. She, that's just what she looks like. But she did have makeup on in that after photo. Well, my lovelies, let me know what you guys think about what we've seen today. And has this show helped you understand a little bit more in depth about certain cosmetic procedures? Because for me, I would say out of all the shows that we watch, this one has been the one that's really made me feel like, oh, I I've learned something from this show that isn't just glitzy drama, reality TV nonsense. Do you know what I mean? Although... It's certainly going there with the relationship between Dr. Ray and his wife. And with that, my loves, it's time for the Patreons. And you can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my lovelies. Yes, you can. And I've got a couple of new Patreons, my lovelies. I want to say a massive hello and welcome to Jenna, Taylor H and Edgar Sketches. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon, you gorgeous people. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Kangamoo. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning kangaroo slash cow on the game. And if you want to be in with chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays and I stream two nights a week, my lovelies, and I'm going to be increasing that number very, very soon. And once again, I want 
want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Aloria, Dr. Dream, Morella, Laura, Elise, Stephanie Neotupski, Orkos Samoji, Andy Henry, Beebles32, Caitlin Coating, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Danielle, Dr. A, Jevod, Elizabeth Stone, Jen Martin, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Laura Jane, Mazelle Morell, Min Min TM, Moisten98, Mariah Sherman, Nixie Tricks, Paula Rivera, Princess Lillian, Rachel V, Seabiscuit, Romano, Ryan Vita, Sasha Smith, Sexy Texy RN, Slampire Queen, Steffu Tech, Succubus Lena, Sushi9393, Traverful, Tromo, Victoria Corella, Victoria Waldock, and Zaya Naza. And you know what, my lovelies? My final note today is you don't necessarily always have to go for the most extreme procedure to get good results. Nowadays, there are excellent options that you can do at home for a more superficial improvement to your skin and your anti-aging routine. I would recommend having a little search on YouTube for the specific target areas that you want to fix. So for example, I think a great all-rounder to start with is a salicylic acid serum before your moisturizer at night. I think that's a great way to start. A great place to start, should I say. And with that, my lovelies, I will see you in the next video. <gasps> yes! She pisses when she boards. Sometimes she shorts. <laughs>